alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to special program, Spirit of Ramadan. I would like to uh, welcome all the brothers and sisters to the Spirit of Ramadan program. Inshallah, from this program, we'll be learning lots of about Ramadan, how to fast in the month of Ramadan, what is halal, what is haram, and inshallah, we have an amazing student from Imam Bukhari Institute, London, and they will be emphasizing um, rules of fasting and hadith and the Quran. I would like to call Hamza Ali from Imam Bukhari Institute of London, uh, can, uh, rules of fasting. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My name is Hamza and today I'll be discussing the rules of Ramadan. Salam al Ramadan is the month where Muslims from dawn to sunset refrain from any eating or drinking with the intention of observing a fast for the sake of Allah. This is one of the five pillars of Islam and Ramadan takes place during the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. Fasting in the month of Ramadan is crucial and compulsory upon every Muslim is able to do so since fasting has many physical, moral and social benefits. However, Allah has made fasting compulsory upon us because it helps us to become pious and God-fearing. To make intention or niyyah is important as before fasting it is necessary. Niyyah translates to intention and it means, some, it means the intention someone makes or he or she will do. A fast without an intention is not valid. So what does Allah say about fasting? Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu kutiba alaykumus siyamu kama kutiba ala lazina min kabilikum lalukum tattakun. O believers, fasting is prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon those before you. So you may learn self-restraint. Ayyama ma'duda, for a certain amount of days. Faman kana minkum maridun aw ala safarin. But whoever amongst you is ill or on a journey, min ayamin ukhar. They should fast the same amount of other days. And for those who cannot, it is required upon those who can afford it to feed a needy person for every day missed. And for those who do more good, it is better for them. However, if you knew, if you truly knew the reason for fasting, it is better for you to fast. So Allah makes it clear in the Quran that fasting is compulsory upon every Muslim, adult and sane and they should learn self-restraint during the month of Ramadan and it's fixed for 30 days. However, some may be on a journey that may prohibit them fasting or make it more difficult for them and uh, some people might be ill or might be going through an illness or medication that will stop them from fasting. In this case, Allah has mercy on those who cannot do so and instead providing an alternative which is to make up the fasts outside of Ramadan. But for those who cannot, you, you must feed a needy person for every day missed. And if we truly knew the reasons behind Ramadan, we should go ahead and fast. So what are some light actions during Ramadan? One of them being to have suhoor, which is the pre-dawn meal, and delaying it a little bit before true dawn. If you miss the pre-dawn meal, you won't be sinful, but it is a good action that will increase your reward in the long term. Another one is not delaying and ending the fast after sunset, Muslims must not delay, the delay breaking the fast as it will cause other problems and may prohibit, prohibit them from fasting other days of the month as well. And ending the fast with dates, if not, if not water, it is important to follow the sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and to finish the fast by eating a date and consuming it with water. And if someone cannot have dates, they can have water instead, it is fine. However, there are some disliked actions during Ramadan which a Muslim should avoid completely in order to benefit the month. Number one, chewing gum or anything that improves the state of breath. In the month of Ramadan, you should avoid having anything in your mouth at all. And if it improves, if it has flavoring, it might break your fast altogether. Tasting or drinking food and then spitting out. This may be difficult for some, as some may be cooking for the iftar, but you must avoid from tasting the food, otherwise it might break your fast. Using toothpaste and then brushing the teeth. We should all practice by using a miswak and avoid using our standard toothbrush and toothpaste. Collecting and swallowing ones on saliva and quenching first. As Muslims, it may be um, hard 
um, fasting without drinking water, but we must learn that self-restraint and put and stop ourselves from collecting um, our own saliva and drinking it in order to quench our thirst. Intentionally delaying a ghusl when a far, when required after true dawn. If you need to take a ghusl, you need to do it no matter what. Taking up too much water up the nostrils when cleaning or making wudu. As Muslims, we should be careful when making wudu as water obviously is needed. However, we should avoid taking up too much through the mouth or through the nose. Complaining about hunger at first. Ramadan is a time where we test ourselves with the limits provi provided for us. So as a result, Muslims should not be complaining about thirst or hunger. K using bad language, backbiting, lying and swearing. As Muslims, we should refrain from all types of um, bad language and we should avoid harming one another during the month of Ramadan. And kissing one's spouse in, if there's fear of this leading to intercourse. As Muslims, we should refrain from um, communicating with our partners if it may lead to one thing or another. So who needs to fast? Allah has clearly said that those amongst us we need to fast as it was prescribed to those before us. However, it is compulsory upon every adult who is mentally unable to do so as, as long as every child has hit the age of puberty. So who are exempt from fasting? There are some people exempt from fasting. However, they will have to make up um, fasting after Ramadan or they'll have to pay compensation towards it. Now, some of these examples being an ill person whose illness will become worse if they do maintain a fast. This is important as some people may be going through medication during the month of Ramadan and as a result, um, they should not risk their own lives if it means fasting that one day. A traveller who's travelling a long distance. Some travellers will need to hold a fast. However, if they're going a long distance, they do not need to fast until after they've finished their journey. A pregnant woman or a woman going through the menses. Ramadan can be a difficult time for women who are pregnant or going through the monthly cycle. As a result, they do not need to fast. However, they need to make up their fast after Ramadan. Children who have not reached the age of puberty, it is not required on them as well. They do not need to fast. And elderly people who are physically and unable to do so. So what can those do who are not fasting? Ramadan is a time where everyone can benefit, regardless if someone's fasting or not. Those who are unable to fast Ramadan will have to make qada or make up the days they have missed outside of Ramadan. On certain cases, a person will have to give fidya or compensation, which is a sum of money or a meal towards, um, uh, towards a donation for their missed fast during Ramadan. It is important to consult your local ulama for advice on what to do um, if you need to give fidya or compensation. However, there are many acts of worship one can do despite fasting, regardless in the month of Ramadan. People can make up their missed prayers, they can engage in the Quran more, they can remove distractions from their life, and they can practice the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad. Ramadan is a time for engaging actively in the Qur'an as well as building or repairing the relationship between oneself and Allah. It is important to reach our, um, our connection as it is important and crucial fit, um, part of our beliefs. It is important to maximise the opportunity Ramadan has given us as some of us may not live to see another Ramadan again. We should treat this Ramadan like our last and put 100% into it. To have the correct intention is important as you do not want to be Fasting Ramadan for the sake of yourself, rather for the sake of Allah. You do not want to be pre-pressured into fasting by others. Rather, you want to be fasting for Allah and Allah alone. If Muslims were doing acts of good before Ramadan, they now, they now have the chance to increase the acts of worship and increase their good deeds in the hereafter. However, if one was doing bad or haram acts in Ramadan, they now have the time to turn around and turn to Allah before it's too late. Ramadan is a time where we should reflect on our behaviour and how we behaved before Ramadan. Ramadan provides everyone with equal opportunity, regardless of age, gender or ethnicity, in order to um, increase the acts of worship. So what can one do? One can first remove all distractions in their life by removing any apps on their phone they know may distract, which include social media or even games. One can also uh, turn off their devices, for example, their TVs, their consoles or even their computers, unless it's necessary. You should also be able to visit the masjid for at least one or two of your five years salahs, which is important because engaging with Allah also means engaging in the house of Allah as well. There are several types of fasting, both in and outside of Ramadan. 
which is number one, the fard fasting, which is of course Ramadan. Number two is wajib fasting, which is fasting if someone has made an oath, vow or a promise. Number three, sunnah, for example, the day of Arafah, the 10th of Muharram, with the 9th or the 11th. Number four is the nafal fast, for those fasts apart from ones previously mentioned. Number five is mustahab fasting, for example, um, fasting on Mondays and Thursdays. Number six is makru tanzihi, which is fasting only on the 10th of Muharram. And number seven is makru tahrimi, which is fasting on Eid al-Adha plus three days after and Eid al-Fitr, which are the 10th, 11th, 12th and 13th of Zul Hijjah and the 1st of Shawwal. Some people are exempted from fasting in the month of Ramadan. If an ill person whose condition will become worse and there's no hope of them recovering from the illness. This is of course a critical condition where someone has no chance of return. A musafir or a traveller does, does not need to fast if the journey is too long and too difficult for them. It is better for them to fast if they will make up qada of the missed fast during Ramadan. And a person does, if a person fears of dying or extremely ill out of hunger, they do not need to fast Ramadan and they can break their fasts, but they will have to make qada of the missed or broken fast. These are the seven different types of fasting during Ramadan and they all follow both makro and mustahab acts. So Allah has established Ramadan and made a compulsory upon every Muslim who is able to fast Ramadan as it was done for those before us and those who will come after us as well. Ramadan is a time in which we will have to learn self-restraint and become better Muslims as a result of what we, need, as a result of what we choose to do. Allah has also made Ramadan easier on us by pardoning a traveller and an ill person by giving them the opportunity to make up fasts after Ramadan. And if a person is unable to do so, they must strive to feed a needy person for every day of the missed Ramadan days. And it is a compulsory upon every adult who is mentally and physically able to do so. Alhamdulillah, we have now reached Ramadan. Ramadan is now a time for every Muslim to be able to now turn their life around and do good and avoid evil. Ramadan has now reached us, which is a good opportunity for Muslims who are behaving badly or Muslims who are even doing good to now increase their acts of worship further by connecting with Allah in this month of Ramadan to remove all obstacles and distractions and enter a new environment to, in order to reach a connection with Allah. The end, goal of every, the end goal of Ramadan should be to improve our state of self and to improve our connection with Allah after Ramadan and see how far we've become as better Muslims in the community. Ramadan is a time where Muslims can build upon the relationship of Allah, build a deep connection with the Quran and miss, catch up with the missed prayers or even pray more prayers in order to increase the ibadah and overall faith. As Muslims, we must strive to be the best Muslims possible and encourage others to do the same as uh, we need to build a strong community of believers and believers of Allah in this, in this modern world, it may be challenging with everything that's going on. However, Ramadan is a time where struggles valued in the sight of Allah and you will be rewarded for each step you take towards building a relationship with Allah whilst avoiding eating and drinking any, anything during the month of Ramadan. Allah values those who strive in his, past, uh, in his path and promises them a high reward. So this is it. I have now explained the rules of Ramadan. Jazakallah for the opportunity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, that was uh, Hamza Ali from Imam Bukhari Institute. Jazakallah khair. MashaAllah, we have learned about uh, Ramadan, uh, rules of fasting, and inshallah, we'll be trying our best to fulfill the rules of fasting, inshallah. And this time, um, uh, th this is the, my brothers and sisters, Ramadan it is a very big blessing for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, given us the opportunity that we shouldn't be um, uh, waste our time a single second of month of Ramadan. Every single second uh, of month of Ramadan is counted. So inshallah, we'll be trying to benefit from uh, the month of Ramadan and according to the month of Ramadan, here after Ramadan, inshallah, we'll uh, fulfill our life, uh, we'll take care of our life, how we passed our month of Ramadan, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.